Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 357 at scavengerlife.com. So the past couple of weeks, we were busy, we were out of town. We were working. We posted a couple of conversations that we had with scavengers slash tax people. <laughs> slash. Uh, number yeah. one is we did a... We recorded another follow-up interview conversation with the kids from Passport the Vintage. Kids. I think I really like to think of myself as an old man. Uh, <laughs> well, they're younger than I am. But yeah, they're not kids. Uh, so they are super interesting because what's they, your names? It's Maria and Ryan. Hey, hey, that's my name. Because they started out doing online and then they, they went were, to retail. Right. They were in Chicago and right. we first co- talked to them because they were selling on Etsy. And we, yeah. Because I was like, does anyone make a living on Etsy? And they said, hey, we do. And like, we do. You know, and they sold like 90s style clothes and they were selling, you know, just from their house on Etsy and they were making a living doing that. And then in the past couple of years, yep. uh, they moved to Austin, Texas they yep. rented a storefront, uh, an area that I know very well. Because uh, you're from Houston. So it's you an old house. In Austin. Yep, it's an old house that's very common over in Austin where people take old houses and turn them into like businesses. Right. Which I, which I love that idea. And anyway, and so they like have like a super popular like Instagram account and they're yeah. kind of like, they're very connected and they sell mainly now jeans jeans is what they focus right? on and they show some pictures of the they store. sell other stuff too and they sell online sometimes too they yep. do have an etsy store and yeah. they sell on instagram a little bit right so you know i love that idea that storefronts could be coming back yeah you know in a different way than you know the traditional kind of of a retail that seems to be being killed by Amazon right. stores like theirs, they have are really unique yeah. vintage items. Now I will say they did start out in retail because they both managed True. American Apparel right. stores, so they did have a background in retail first. So right. they kind of have a good handle on how they wanted to do it. Yeah, as I mean, well. Yeah, they definitely seem like they have a lot of experience, so they're not just like going into a blind. Right. Uh, that's interesting. And then the other conversation we posted was also a follow up with Mark Two, not your dad's CPA. Yeah, who is an accountant. And when I talked to him a couple of a years ago, he was just kind of getting into you know he worked for a company mm. as an accountant. Right. And on the side, he was doing like taxes for people, and he was. Doing some for people that sold online, and I was asking him its questions, and I really remember back then he was like, "Huh, those are good questions." Like he wasn't really sure. Well, since then, yeah, he's like now almost fully doing taxes, and he quit his job, and they actually moved to Central America. Yeah, crazy story. Him and his whole uh, its family, and now he has an online uh, business where he does taxes and accounting for people that sell online. Yeah, and he knows a lot more. It was a great conversation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he mostly, his clients are people like us. Yeah. And people like, on, you know, on the forum who right. are online sellers, independent people, probably have yeah. like three or four different streams of income. And we'll talk about taxes a bit more because we'll talk about how well we did our taxes because if yeah. you haven't done taxes by now, you're, you're, you're in deep trouble. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, really taxes are like, at the end of the day, in some ways it's pretty... A simple, it once you figured out how to log all the info mm-hmm. to, to, to keep track of it all, log your profit and your expenses. Yeah. As, you know, it's it's actually not that hard, but it's that a learning curve of you know, right. going from being a W 2 employee where they just they just take you, it all you out, file it in one second, right, you get your refund check a week later. I mean, yeah, that's not business. this world. Okay, so we were in a Nashville. For a week, I love Nashville. I think it's a great city. Yeah, it had been ten years uh, from the last time I was there, and it just exploded. Like they had taken all these like parts of town that I guess were pretty uh, run down, and they're just like super fancy apartments and restaurants. It's a great and, city. I love the size of Nashville. Yeah, you know, it's, you can walk around, and you're like, oh, I walked around town, you right. know. And and we want to thank 
Phil and Myrna. Yep, and uh, Myrna's mom. Uh, they uh, they us... helped us because they let us park at their house because we had a job downtown, so right. it's tough if you drive and you're like, where do I... And parking was going to be like 30 to $40 a night, and so we had, you know, I reached out and they emailed us and they uh, let us park at their house in their driveway, and we just took a cab back and forth. And uh... No, actually, Phil drove us into town Sorry. one night. He actually drove us there, right? I so, mean, talk about cool. super generous. Yeah, so I think he saved us between two and three hundred dollars on parking. So that's uh, the scavenger way, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and it's and it's interesting. We got a chance to kind of sit it's with them for a bit, and they kind of talked about their uh, business. And he mainly buys at estate sales. Yeah. It's kind of like that's his 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 jam, right? <laughs> And what's interesting to me is he's one of those guys that tells everyone that he sells online. Right. You know, I don't think he has a card, but like all the estate dealers know know that he's there to buy and sell online. He openly says it and he says that like, you know, those people call him and he gets invited early and it's just, I think that's so great. We are the kind of people that don't tell anybody. We don't tell anybody we sell. It's the opposite. Because I don't know if it's like an unfounded fear that I'm just afraid people will be like, well, if you're going to buy this to sell online, then I'm not going to sell it to you for cheap. cheap. (laughs) I feel like, you know, I don't know. And maybe there are certain circumstances where it's better to do that. I don't I don't know. Yeah. But but then I hear these guys that are so open about it and they have their own car that people are calling them to come and get stuff. They'll give stuff to them for free. Doing deals. All this stuff. I, I don't know. So I, I well, it's just a different way of doing it. We are not out of the closet. No, <laughs> no. Nope. So during that week we were in a uh, Nashville, uh, we sold like crazy. I mean, well, and we changed our handling right, time. Our, our handling time would change to five business days. Yeah, and we were getting lots of sales. Right? Yeah. I mean, we we did great. Yeah. So like by the time we got home, I think we were gone for like nine days. I had to pack 70, like, by the end of that, that weekend, I had to pack, like, 75 right. items. And there were some high price items in there. Yep. And before that, it had been slow. And to me, I know it's not scientific, but when people say things like, if you don't list every day, if you, you know, change your handling time, if yeah. you do all these things, your sales are going to drop off and eBay is going to push you down in the... In the right. uh, a search, and I'm just like we haven't I, seen that really. I, I just I think that all those things aren't as powerful on the as search as people think. Right. You know? I mean, I'm sure their search algorithms always kind of being tweaked and things, but I don't think it's one one of the things where it's on or off. You right. Know? Because it didn't seem like it. I mean, I was like, oh, sales are gonna die, and they yeah. totally didn't. Like by the time I got home, I was like. Oh my god, I have so much stuff to pack. It's like crazy. Which is a great problem to have. Which, you know, when packing pack- was annoying. Packing was super annoying and exhausting. And so we got home Saturday afternoon and I packed, I was like, since we have same day handling in quotes, and that's when I set my handling time to end was Monday morning. I had to pack everything on Sunday. The good thing is a lot of it was closed. So, you know, you just throw that stuff in a poly mailer and you're yep. good to go. But some of it was like, one of one of the things was like this kind of biggish wooden trunk and like a bunch of glassware. I'm like, oh, a set, two different sets of plates. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> but you know what? That stuff shipped out, got delivered, and I've not heard anything. So I'm assuming nothing broke. Because, like, some of those things were triple boxed. So hopefully it's good. As always, you were able to do it. I I packed 75 items all on Sunday. It's you had the uh, door open to it's the office. It was nice. It was nice how cats were in and out. The music was playing. or you know, I did all of it. Rock and roll. But I... As a shipping nerd, too, it's like you want to get it all. You yeah. want it all shipped out ASAP. And I will say, this is one of the first times we've been able to come back from a trip. And instead of me going over to our uh, various storage areas and, like, get everything, yep. y- you could just go out, pull everything from our building. That's partly um, why yeah. I was able to do it all in one day. I mean, right. I did some of it Monday morning, but not a lot. Right. Um I just pulled stuff. I would do it in like, you know, groups of 10 or 20, pull a few things, pack them, 
get them out on the front porch, pull a few things, pack them. So because we were, so the single handing time, so it took a week, you know, so people had, people that bought right when we had had left, had to wait a week. Yeah. Um, So there there were a couple people who were like, Hey, how, uh, do you have my tracking number? And you're like, you know, I'm shipping Monday morning, just a reminder. Um, and that was fine. Nobody had a problem. So anyway, yeah. that's the way we do it. I feel like it's always a controversial thing. People are like, you should put it on vacation. Uh, it's, you know, whatever. Okay, so yeah. this is my old man corner. Right? <laughs> yeah. Of of the show. So I, I'm the one that we took our truck, and it was like a nine-hour drive. Jay drove like... I got on the. I got on the. I did work on the computer. Yeah, no, it's great. Did you turn the phone into a hotspot, and uh, you were a listing and editing. And, and we'll know. talk about more about my drafts in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but, so I had two ideas. Yeah. That I was thinking about while you were driving. Okay. I remember when I was a kid in the eighties that it was a really big deal if someone thought there were satanic messages on an album, or yep. that. If you played it backwards, that there would be like things like yeah, kill yourself or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And none of those things were true. But I remember like there would be court cases. Like I don't know, yep. like Ozzy Osbourne or someone right. I remember was taken to court over it. Like yep. they were being sued, or I don't know if they were going to be put in jail. I mean, those court cases obviously all died because of freedom of speech. But I'm just like, just it's just so funny how it seemed like it not a a long period of time that stuff like that could uh, never fly you know like people could actually put out albums if they want that the with satanic with actual messages, satanic messages and it wouldn't be a big deal well maybe know? because those court cases happened right that now you can be like okay it's freedom of speech right? because you know people know why were you thinking about that there's no devil you know anyway <laughs> but that's you know. hey that you know yeah. a lot of people believe in the devil some people are like, you're that devil. Anyway, I, I just think that, I don't know. <laughs> this is my old man corner. This is what old men think about. And the you're, other thing you're was, like, remember? <laughs> when I'm driving, yeah. and we've talked about this, I can't remember the last time I've been a uh, lost. Right. You know? Because, because of GPS. Of GPS. I just have right. to go, put, you know, I put my phone on one of those holders in the truck plug it yep. in and I just type in where I want to go and it tells me where to go. I don't even have to, I, I, these days, I don't even uh, look where it's taking right, me. Right. I'm just like, yeah, just take me. Well, what was great is we had the address of Phil and Myrna's house in Nashville and we were like from our house to their house, you know, eight and a half hours go. Right. And that's just what right. we were just like, I don't tell us to where to go. What, and, and I can remember being in high school, like uh, learning how to drive a car and, and, and I had to have the paper map of Houston. Houston is oh, like God. a kind of a nightmare place to, to drive and I would, you know, if someone lived on the other side of town, you know, in, oh, Friends, and- in Friendswood or something, <laughs> in a woodland, right. in Sugarland, because right, right, Sugar I lived inside of Houston so it was always a pain to get, you know, I would have to be like, all right, I got to take this road and this road and... You know, Don't miss I'd, the turn. I'd be stopping. At, you know, there'd always be. I'd, I'd have to stop off at two uh, gas stations and ask, like, oh. "Where's one ten from here?" Well, know? like I remember also, like back in the day, it would be like, "Okay, you'd stop at a gas station." Like for us, if we were driving wherever, we'd be like in the middle of Connecticut, and I'd be like, "Can you tell us where?" The- okay, go up the hill. There's a church on the left. Go down the hill. Take a right. Re- You're like I'm never gonna remember any of this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But we we always found things. But now yeah. it's just it's it's crazy awesome. I love it. Mm-hmm. Okay, we also want to thank a uh, bunch of scavengers that came to the farmhouse this yep. week. It was Russ and Mike and Brenda from yep. Kentucky. Yeah, two couples that came. They stayed in our farmhouse uh, specifically because they you know they're podcast people. I know and which scavengers, is so funny. and it was fun. We. Had a, a lunch and then they came over and checked out our like. We showed up our storage. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Well, they want to come over and see that," and it was fun. Yeah, they definitely thought it was cool. Yeah, which is funny. So it's interesting. Uh, Brenda, the kind of one that organized the the coming over, so yeah. she's like the main. She's like the sold on eBay for a long time. It's her main, you know, full time. Yeah. What's interesting is. She says forty percent of her a profit every month comes from uh, selling stuff in an antique mall, right? And she's got six booths, you know, at this antique mall. 
and 40 percent that is a lot that is a lot money. so she has like she said she had like six booths but i will say this a couple things number one she's in an urban area she's right. in a hipster up and coming location and she stages her booth right she she's not photos. like a lot of people who just like throw junk in there i mean right. she has like motifs going on right. she has themes she has shabby chic she has like you know mixed with like hipster modern stuff and you know mid-century modern so that i think makes a huge difference she has an eye and right. she has a, d- a design eye right. and and it's like you said she's in an area where they're i i'm i think kind of hipster people who are willing to pay for that kind of stuff and like, they want that cool look like i think that's a dream of all of us like there's lots of antique malls around where uh, yeah. where uh, we are and I'd love to it's be able like to that. like stuff it with stuff in a really nice way. Yeah, right. And make a lot of money. But I know from talking to people around here that do that. Yeah. They're just, it's basically they're paying for storage. Their storage. You know? There's not much money being made. And, you know, I think people think of antique malls. Oh, I'll just put my furniture and my big stuff and it'll sell and I won't have to put it on eBay. But Brenda does a lot of work. I mean, she stocks it constantly. She's always tweaking it. She did, like, she showed us, like, a New Year's Christmas theme. I mean, that is the work that yeah. goes into to selling. I hope she doesn't mind me uh, saying this, but uh, no one knows who uh, she is or where uh, she is, so it's okay. Yeah. But, uh, she says uh, she spends $900 on those six. On rent. Yeah, on those six So booths. clearly it's so, profitable. Right, so, so she, it's you know. not, I don't, I think that that's a good thing to uh, mention. It's not free, like it's right. not free uh, money she's right. uh, making. But also she doesn't have to pay a percentage of what she sells, so it's $900 flat. Right, because right? she pays the rent, so, right? You know, Some it, places you do pay percentage yeah. instead. So, but. I think that's interesting. And it's funny that, you know, this week is the theme of like, you know, Passport Vintage has a retail store. Yeah. Brenda has an antique booth that's really popular. I mean, these are the things that, I mean, I'm always interested in hearing about these things because, like I've said, if someone can convince me of a good idea, we will change our business yeah. because of that. You know, if I thought that us getting an antique booth or getting a storefront would be profitable... Then I would do it. I would do Here. it. Here, yeah. I just, I'm not Here convinced Here is a bit area. tough. Yeah. Right. But like, what if we went into like a DC? If we were and got in like DC, an antique mall. I mean, if we were in whatever. DC area, the the funny thing is though, like, I just don't want to drive to DC. Yeah. Well, that's the like other. Yeah. to restock. I'm like, mm-mm. Yeah. So Brenda is the opposite of Phil, who we mm-hmm. met in uh, Nashville, where she doesn't. She's is like us. She says she doesn't, you know, announce or advertise it. She sells online, right? When she goes to auctions or flea markets, or and she says whatever. she buys a lot of auctions. She she calls herself kind of an an actor. It's when she's out there scavenging, and I can totally buy into that idea because I do the same thing. You know, if I'm at a flea market and I'm standing in front of a table, yeah. and there's like a bunch of stuff I want. You know, I kind of am like acting a little bit, like, "Oh, this would be great for my collection." Yeah, or, people are like, "Are you, people often want to know why you're yeah, buying something?" Or my grandma, she would love this yeah. collection of plates. You know, how much is it? Uh, I'm telling know? you, it's tough to tell people at a flea market. I'm gonna flip this on eBay right. for a hundred dollars. Yeah. Will you give me your cheapest bottom yeah. dollar price? How low will you go? You know, they're right. like, "What?" Yeah, and you know the same thing. I guess when people are trying to buy from it, you too, you know, you kind of play an actor as well. Like, oh, well, people often ask where it came from. Yeah. Oh, this came from a, a expensive estate in the Virginia farmhouse. You know, yeah, people. Like, are, yeah, uh, I got it off of a shelf in the back of a thrift store. Oh, uh, and in, in the back of like the junkiest basement thrift store you could possibly <laughs> imagine. Right. Uh, it was moldy. So. I um, think, so I so I think it's interesting. There's two different ways of doing it. You know. Yeah. Right, exactly. And so we kind of fall into the actor. Yep. Method acting. <laughs> yep. Okay, let's talk about eBay. People are like, what are you talking what, what, what is this? Yeah. Like a travel diary? Okay, <laughs> eBay. So taxes had to happen mm-hmm. April 16th. Um, hopefully They everyone... extended it by a day because of yeah. some, like, problem. Yeah, and, you know, I know a lot of people say they uh, ask for an extension, and then if you ask for an extension, uh, you can file... In, the, in October or In something? the fall, yeah. But you have to pay. Right. That's the thing. I, I just want to be real clear with people. It's fine if people do an extension. That's cool. Our 
our accountant says that he always does an extension too. Right. But you still have to pay your what estimated you owe. Amount. And even if you don't know exactly, if you have to pay a reasonable amount, you know. Uh, and if not, then they'll fine you for that. So for so. me, it's kind of like you have to kind of know your numbers to know what you owe. So you yeah. might as well just file your taxes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't like, know. Why put the pain off? But anyway, know. so we – and I just I just I want to go over how we do our taxes briefly. Because yeah. Because we get a lot of questions about it. We start to use GoDaddy bookkeeping. Yep. Uh, it just kind of sucks in our info from PayPal and eBay and right. all of our bank accounts and credit cards. Yep. And then we can teach it the things that are expenses and the uh, profit, and we do that every every month. Month, right? You On kinda... the first of the month, I do our numbers. I do have to manually input some of our local bank accounts, but it's not that big a deal. And then at the end of every year, when we do our taxes and we I need to go to our accountant, GoDaddy Bookkeeping keeps a we just a print out a worksheet, right? Yeah. So what I do is I. Um... I do a spreadsheet of like all the different expenses. Uh, I kind of clean it up a little bit. Some things have to get combined and whatever. But then I have like this spreadsheet to give to our accountant. Here are all the expenses for this, that, this. And that's just automatically m- uh, made, right? Like it's Yeah, just- but I clean it up, like right. I said. I, I have to clean it up. So it's not totally... Okay. I do some work. It's not like GoDaddy okay. just automatically does right. it. But I kind of like organize it for our accountant. Right. And then we meet with the accountant and we're like, here's our info. Right. So we go to a, a local accountant, you know, and he uh, he uh, knows us and we like him and he's like our grandpa. He's like, yeah, how are your kids doing? Yep. <laughs> uh, and we give him all of our stuff and he asked us any uh, it's questions. Then he calls us back after about a week, and he says, okay, I've done the taxes, here here they are, and he explains them. Right. And then what we do at that point is we spend every a year about 15 minutes to half an hour, and we just kind of talk to him about our plans for the upcoming... Uh, the next uh, year, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like if we're going to buy any new uh, real estate, or if we're going to in- invest somehow, right. you know. It's basically like he gives us free tax advice, you know? It's not free because well, he's our accountant that we pay for him to do our... It's not like we just walked in off the no, street. No, but I think that some people might actually charge for oh, that. For like, you know, he's like, okay, you know, I'm going to charge you here's a good $200 idea. an hour and I'll be like, it's your financial advisor. Uh, I see. But that's just... I mean, and we are obviously not at the level where like we, we, we need like that. estate planning and right. all that. But that's good for us because we get to uh, run by some ideas by him just to see how that might affect our taxes and how right. we should think about things. Yeah. No, he's great. He's like our partner. You know? And anytime I have a question about how certain deductions work or whatever, like, oh, am I doing this number right? You know, he'll he'll always answer those questions, which is so helpful. Right. You know, should I should I deduct this a certain way or how should I, you know, right. calculate this number? And so that's always so helpful. Yeah. I mean, he's basically our partner in the uh, business. Right. You know? exactly. And that would be different if we just went to like kind of one of those big tax places h&r block or something where you know it's kind of would they take our taxes with like you know our general partnership and our i don't know i wonder but i assume so but yeah how well would they do i don't know and then it's different too you know some people love to do their own taxes which god bless them yeah Uh, you know they do it on intuit i guess or quickbooks or whatever turbo tax yeah which and some people say they do a good job and they enjoy it and it's great and that's fine, but uh, we just like to have that a layer of like right a second pair of eyes on. Things. I just I need him to. It's a little bit complex yep. with real estate and stuff. We noticed, and other people had noticed too, that on March twelfth, eBay kind of quietly changed the uh, returns process. Yep. You know, people were like, "Huh, this person's starting a a, a a return, and there's nothing I can do about it. Like, there's no way." They would call eBay, and eBay started telling everybody that reps can no longer get involved in a return. Right. So here's an example uh, of why you would want a rep involved. The person says, item not as described. And then in the description, they say, I didn't like the color or whatever, similar to that. So you're like, hey, 
why should I pay for all the shipping for this? Right. It's, it's, it's buyer's obviously. remorse. And so now the reps will say, we can't do anything about it. You have to accept the return and then call us after to fight it. And we actually got a message from eBay where they said, eBay tried a year-long experiment to be involved in a returns. Right. And buyers don't Did, like didn't it. Didn't like it. No kidding. No Sellers no. probably loved it. So eBay is like, all right, we're no longer going to get involved. And so basically now you just have to accept the uh, return. And yep. I guess my question is... It does kind of suck. How do you fight it once you get it back? Dispute I, it. Can you at all? I mean, like I've always said... We are still in the beta program, so I fight it through the case right. online. I say, this person clearly has buyer's remorse. And then the <laughs> crazy thing is, the buyer can dispute that. And then I have to call. Yeah. But for people who aren't in that program, they just have to call the reps and be like, okay, I'm fighting this now. I want a refund on so shipping. So reps can't get involved when the buyer first opens a case, but once you accept the return and get it, then you they can, can get involved. Okay. I think so. Because so what so when eBay says they want everyone to do free returns and you're disputing a return for whatever reason, isn't eBay gonna get involved? So don't you call them and get them involved? Right. Like how's that gonna work? Right. I don't know. But I have e no idea. But you know, this is where, you know, eBay gets a frustrating just like any big corporation, you know, they don't telegraph their strategy and all the talk they do behind the scenes, but it yep. seems like it's just another strategy to push sellers just to do free returns <sighs> because yeah. they're like, we're not going to get involved anymore. Involved. It's going to be a hassle. You're going to have to eat it anyway, so you might as well do free returns. That's what it feels like yep. to me. My problem is, and I've always said this, there's no such thing as free returns, free, free shipping. Uh, shipping. None of that stuff is free. Right. Someone has to pay for it. And I think eBay, if they want that to happen, they need to have skin in the game. You Meaning? know, like they need to like instead of going from twenty percent to ten percent on final value fees to be a For top rated top seller, rated, yeah. they should give us back that ten is percent yeah. or give us a a bit more. Like they should have some skin in the game. Yeah. Well, because it just makes it tough when you're getting like clothing returns where they said, I don't like the color item not as described. And right. you're like, what? Right. Uh, and, you know, no. it's my fear is that eBay is just becoming like Amazon. I mean, I remember that kind of 18 month experiment where we were selling on Amazon and we kind of went full of force into it. I mean, we like were doing it and we started getting those. Uh, yep. We started to get those uh, its returns, and when we would ask Amazon about a, a return that didn't seem right, they just would send us this like flowerly, flowerly <laughs> form letter, form email yeah. that was like, "We understand this is uh, frustrating, but nice. in our experience, yeah, you know, we expect the seller to assume a certain amount of loss." And in the end, you're just going to sell more. So they're basically telling you, we know buyers are abusing this, but just eat it. Yeah. That's just part of doing because business. Because they would say, you know, item doesn't work, item right. was damaged, item not as described. And then you'd have Amazon send it back to you, and you're like, this is totally fine. They didn't even open the box. But, you know, their Amazon, I think, is having this idea that people that sell on Amazon are doing volume. So, again, it's just like, it's your, they're assuming, you just be like a Walmart Assume you're going to eat 8% of right. your exactly. costs, and that's okay. Yep. And up until now, eBay has been really good, I felt, at like protecting a seller. Or at least there were some more uh, mechanisms right. to be able to deal with that. A um, little bit more, yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't know. Like, are we just being babies about it? Like, should we just, I don't you know, know, assume that... 8% of our profit is going to be eaten up by bad uh, I think 8% returns. is a little bit high, but... 3%. I mean, like, yeah, what... Yeah, 3%, percent like, It's percent. Like, I wish eBay would, would be honest about it. Like, we just expect, you know, a certain amount, blah, blah, blah. I mean, yeah. obviously it's good for the buyer, but for people that, you know, sell... Small sellers. 500 items, you know, and they might only sell 50 things... A month like that's a it's tough, it's tough yeah. what is acceptable loss i don't know think about that yeah pause the podcast think about it come back and then put it on the forum and tell us okay so here's another example where ebay really feels like they're kind of like the system is really built 
for you to be like an Amazon like person on eBay where you're just uh, selling brand new items in quantity like that seems to be how their a system is set up for right well well when when they're like sending you messages like top tips for selling your items and and they're like do this on all your listings and you're like no you want free shipping on all your listings yeah or you know hey if you could buy these brand new tennis oh, yeah. rackets and you know sell those on eBay right like what was that one we got the other day where it was like you know, custom growth suggestions, like, you can buy all this wholesale stuff. And I'm like, where did, why are they sending me this email? Like, this seems very customized to a certain seller. Yeah. Well, and also on the uh, forum, uh, uh, you guys were making fun of the suggestions that eBay was telling me. Item-specific put- suggestions. So, like, eBay generally, like, in the past year has been really good with when you type your title in and you... It, it, number one, it gives you really good category suggestions where it's like, oh, this is a woman's sweater. And you're like, yep, it is. And then it'll give you all these item-specific suggestions like, oh, you said it was purple, it's L.L. Bean, it's cotton. Sort of like start filling those things in for you. But there are certain times where it get lately there's some bug where it gives you like 50 item specific suggestions from all these weird categories like Like Legos, automotive, automotive, you know, artwork, you know, like gilded frame. You're like, what? And the item is a shirt. Yeah. You're like, where did all these come? And it sucks because like every time you, you're like, okay, I'm going to ignore all those. And you start typing in um, your cat item specifics. It, like, moves the page down because it's giving you more suggestions. And you're like, I can't even work on this listing. Like, it's going crazy. So I took a screenshot and some other people took screenshots of, like, this insane list. I don't, it's some bug. It's a weird bug. On some items, it's fine. But on some categories, it just goes crazy. So, yeah, eBay, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, I, again, to I'll wrap this up about, you know, the, I, I just, I feel like eBay is becoming this platform. That's trying to become like Amazon, yeah. where they want people to come and buy like a brand new TV and like sure. some new shoes. Yep. Um, and then everything we do, like <laughs> people all on this podcast, just doing scavenging, selling old stuff, is kind of like we're now kind of hacking eBay to do our business. Although eBay will, I, I feel like eBay will deny that in a way, yeah. where, where they're like, no, we're, we're still like, you know, their whole... Their whole advertising, and you see it on all their shipping supplies that you buy from them and poly mailers, shop like you're unique because you're not like anyone else. Mm. And you're like, yeah, uh, yeah, that's my store. Yeah, I feel like it, you know, it's maybe just a big, huge corporation and just there's, there's a fight inside yeah. of like who's going to win. I mean, I, I don't expect eBay to only be like the place for all weird stuff, but right. definitely. Every article that you read is about, you know, someone bought a photograph and it's not on worth, eBay yeah, and it's or, like you know, Billy the Kid yeah. or whatever. I mean, you know, like where everyone knows to go to eBay to get anything. That's it's not just right. like, you know. Well, I was like, talking to when when Brenda and I were chatting about ephemera actually cuz she loves selling old letters and old menus and I absolutely love that stuff. I'm about to list a bunch of old menus and we were just like where else would you buy that except, like, in person at a flea market or wherever? Right. Like, online, there's nowhere. I mean, Etsy, maybe. But eBay is the place you think of, you right. know? Yeah. I mean, I guess, you know, I just I wonder. I'm just trying to think the last time eBay rolled out some new uh, system, some new thing. Right. And it was really benefited Mm -hmm. and embraced the fact that there's all these people that sell uh, used items and weird items items. and scavenged items like yeah instead of trying to you know basically pigeonhole or not pigeonhole but you know to make people like us these small people try and act like we're big Amazon sellers Amazon free shipping free free returns returns, like growth top tips growth suggestions Cutting our, you know, fees yeah. for being top rated. And and I'll end on this. Yeah. I don't want this to sound like I'm it's just a, a sad, mean man on the eBay Gloom and uh, forums yeah. where this is how they talk. But I will give some credence to that where yeah. it's, just, it's just unfortunate, you know. 
Maybe, I mean, and I feel like this happens with eBay sometimes, is it, it comes in phases where there are things like this where you're like, what are they doing? And then it kind of like, they pull back a little bit and it's not as crazy, but I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, um, uh, I'm sure I can hear some guy in eBay who's like, you know, like, we love those kind of right of sellers selling the weird stuff, but, you know, we're in a we're in a battle for our life against Amazon. Like we have to stay afloat and you know, like we need to get more of that, a market. So people buy refrigerators and TV diapers and I don't know. Right. Okay. I looked and eBay has this stat like on your, a seller page. Yeah. We've been on for about 10 years now. I mean, we're using a year ID, which started in, in 1999, right. but I was like buying and selling like just a handful right. of items. It was items like very that, small. Yeah. But it's only been 10 years. We've sold about 16,000 items. In 10 years. That's pretty it's amazing. Kind of a lot, yeah. But yeah, I know, right? So when, when people are like, are you sure you want to ship shoes and poly mailers? I'm like, I've sold literally thousands of shoes and yeah. thrown them in poly mailers and they've all been buying right <laughs> you know so i can say thousands that's a lot of items you know Sixteen thousand. yeah it's a lot it is a lot yep, yep it is a lot i know there are sellers that have a lot more than that but they're like i sold sixteen thousand dollars last week Sixteen thousand items Sixteen thousand items last week <laughs> <laughs> some people have okay we had an issue yes this past week I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay. I talked about it on the forum a little bit, but for those who didn't go on there. uh, So in the run up to our job in Nashville um, and just doing stuff for the rentals, blah, blah, blah. I had about 500 drafts between you and our two helpers that I needed to list. Now, one of our helper normally does scheduled listings, but in the last couple weeks, I've just been like, I want you to get through this like massive pile of stuff. So just do photos and do item specifics, but just keep it in drafts and I'll get to it. Uh, the problem is uh, that we found out was after a month, a little, I think it's a little over a month. It's like, you know, 35 days or something. eBay basically does not save your photos. The listings there, the measurements, the title, the item description, the item specifics, whatever is there. But your photos stop showing up. (laughs) So obviously that's an issue. Um, And it's tough because on some of them too, I I was able to see a thumbnail. But the thumbnail is so small, sometimes you're like, this is just a beige shirt. Which beige shirt is it? So I was able to kind of like zoom in and identify items but i had i think i had about a hundred items that didn't have photos it was a hundred items out of 300 out of 500 500 so still you're like okay at least it's not well i mean right the uh, nightmare would have been that the photos all disappear and there was no way to tell what's what because we've already put all those items into our inventory right so we all in storage so there would have no way for us to have known what What items what yeah because yeah of that reason so the answer i mean here's the thing though we knew we we kind of knew we shouldn't do that i mean we didn't know what that this would happen yeah but we had already known that we should do scheduled uh, listings when we want things to sit for a while right um but we had been working with a new helper, and she's not quite as as quick. She's not as fast as our other helper. And we're just having her take a, a photos and not doing titles or anything else. And so we were like, let's do it on drafts. And we just got, I got behind. Yeah. yeah, behind. And so the other thing, too, is I was listing in that time, but I wasn't always listing the oldest stuff. Mm. I would, like, bounce around and, and list newer the, things. Yeah, more fun, fun things. Yeah. And I didn't want to list this, like, huge cache of, like digital photo prints i was just like i'm bored of those and of course those are the ones where all the photos went away but the great thing is honestly with a lot of that stuff i was able to go through and i had lot numbers so i was like oh it's lot number you know 001 okay it's in this pile i'll retake photos so i've done a majority so this week i actually put our helper on hold i was like i need you i'm dealing with some weird ebay thing just come back next week. And so I I have a handful of things, maybe like less than 10 that I have to take photos of, but I've been taking photos yeah. all week. And then, stuff. then starting uh, now, 
will teach this new helper. To do we just have to bite the bullet, and it's going to be kind of a slow, slow period where we teach her how to write. You know, you got to do well. titles, yep. and you got to schedule them because. Even if I can't keep up totally, I just know that everything's there. Because yeah. I've never had that problem with scheduled where after 30 days... Although usually I'm fast enough where I'm like, I get stuff listed. Yeah. You know, it's faster than right. a month. Just... All lessons are expensive. That was... that. Okay. Basically, that will never happen again. Yep. I will never let things go that long. So, free returns. Uh, you know, eBay's been pushing this program, although I haven't really heard a lot about it after they... It's been about a month or so. Yeah. I, I heard some people were turning it on. We haven't <laughs> turned it on yet, and we're not sure if we're going to. My yeah. question is, has anyone who's turned on the free uh, it returns actually gotten one from a buyer? And how did they feel about that process? Interesting. You know? Right. I would love Who's to Who's turned it on? Has anyone yeah. turned it on? I mean, I, I don't think it's been on. If someone started it right, it's when they could. I don't think there's been enough time yet to really get a sense of like, you know, it's happening 5% of our sales mm. or something. But right. I would love to start hearing how people feel about that. Yep. Come on the forum and tell us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when we were driving, I listened to podcasts. Yeah. That's all we uh, we uh, listen to. We don't really uh, listen to the straight uh, radio when driving because just you lose the signal. Radio's coming in and out. <laughs> yep. Um, so one of the episodes I listened to um, was on drop shippers. Yeah, and we're gonna link to it. Um, it was on Reply All, which is a podcast, which is a great technology podcast. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, you know, it was like kind of a outside group. That doesn't know really anything about what any of us do. Right. And it's interesting hearing them kind of uh, come at this topic from kind of an outsider's point of view. Like, what are they doing? They don't Yeah, like, actually, what is this? They don't they touch don't, the merchandise? They don't actually own in the inventory, and they just right. put up a listing, and then when someone buys it, they order it somewhere else and then have it shipped. Yep. Like, and and it's just, it's, it's a great, and really, the end of the day... What they come up with is that they couldn't find anyone that drop ships that actually makes a living drop shipping. Drop shipping. What what they make a living doing is selling courses on YouTube. Right, is selling the <laughs> courses. Like that seems to be the people who are getting say. rich are the people that actually do drop. It shipping was so anyway. funny when they came to that realization at the end of the podcast. We were like, "That's what we always yeah, say." I know. I mean, and, and, and maybe there are people out there that make a living drop. A yeah. shipping, but the only people they interviewed or could find were people that said, "Yeah, I tried it, and it was horrible because someone would buy, then I would order it, and then the order would be late, and so I'd get in trouble, and I'd have to refund their money, and I was out the money, or the person would get a item, and because I'm not the one handling the item, it's actually bad quality, or there's something wrong right. with it, and, and then they uh, want to return it. So I have to eat that cost. I mean, you know, so I'm getting items I can't resell. It's uh, yep. it's interesting. And actually, a woman joined our forum uh, the past week, and she says she was actually she started off trying to drop shift because uh -huh. uh, she saw those courses, and she actually got kicked off of Amazon because of that because. It didn't uh, work out. Mm -hmm. She got too many returns yep. and didn't yep. ship on time. So That'll happen. And, and then you're like, well... Now she's joining the scavengers. Yep. I mean, and and they were... It was interesting in that podcast, which we'll uh, link to, if you should hear, uh, that, you know, they were asking, you know, why would anyone tell other people if they're making millions of dollars? Why would they <laughs> tell people how, how to, to do, do it? it? You know? <laughs> And because they were like, if they're really making millions of dollars doing this... Why do they have to sell a course? I feel like, it, you know, that doesn't make sense, you know? Well, uh, and And, and yeah. I think that's true. You know, it's like, they were like, yeah, if someone is like a stock market guy and he's making millions of dollars because he figured out a way to sell it, he's not going to... They're going to tell you. Yeah. Well, it's like those real estate, whenever I have heard of right. those like real estate schemes where they're like... Make millions of dollars, blah blah blah. At the here's at you know our convention at the hotel, whatever. And you're like, yeah. why would they tell you what to do if they if this is like a secret? You know what I mean? Yeah. So the question so that's, is that's a question for us, right? So the question is right. Why do we do this? Because we are right now. Yeah. 
creating our own competition. And it's no joke, you know? Like, yeah. we've seen people come on our forum. They're like, thanks. You know, I started this because I heard you and uh, you're teaching me how to do it. And now I'm making, you know, a thousand dollars selling hats. And we've seen, yeah. and I'm not saying we have that much influence where we are controlling the uh, market. But, you know, uh, if we tell people that we make a money selling hats, uh, I've noticed other people sell hats. And, then, right. you know, there's less... Anyway, uh, so what's the answer? So, it doesn't make sense for us to do this if making money is our end game, right? You it's know, the only end game. Like, it, like if we're purely trying to dominate, yeah, we should just shut up and the podcast, right? And like dominate the market, right? Yeah, be dominators. But I think for us and you, I want you to jump in on this. Mm-hmm. You know, the way I see it is. Is that like, you know, in America, it's like capitalism is is at this stage where it's just pumping out stuff. Yeah. Like there's like a pipeline of stuff that's just being pumped out and they figured out they can get a workers in other countries to do it for cheaper. It doesn't, yep. you know, and there's all this stuff and there's they're pumping out more stuff than people can buy. So, you know, we're all now like just buying a new stuff. All the time because it's just cheaper than trying to fix the old stuff. Yep. I mean, it's just all that's crazy stuff. And I think we love the idea of taking this capitalism pipeline and turning it in on itself. You know, where like we're taking that stuff that it's pumping out and pumping it back into the a uh, system. You know, and again, I don't have any illusions of how much power or influence we have, but I love the idea of what if we can get everyone. If we could make their first thought when they want to buy something, to buy it used. used. Yep. I think it's starting. Like, wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. And then these companies would have to think more clearly about what they're creating and the quality. You know, they'd have to be like, huh, people are just buying a used stuff because there's so much of it. Because because we're making too uh, much of it. Maybe we need to make better quality or I don't know. Yeah. You know, it reminds me of going into a Goodwill, where you feel like you're at Marshall's. You're like, there's so much stuff here that's, like, basically brand new. Someone barely wore it. Some of it's new with tags, because, like, the actual stores are like, we just have to get rid of this for the new stuff, you know? And so, yeah, I agree with that, where you're like... So, I would trade if our eBay business just died, and we didn't make another dollar from eBay. I would trade that... (laughs) For an America where we were less a wasteful, right? You know, and we got to a point where just everyone was buying and selling a used goods, or everything kind of changed to where everything was being made better quality, and you and know, then you keep it for longer right. because it's not disposable, right? Um, like I would totally trade that, and that's that's why we're in it to uh, win it here, you know. Well, also, it's nice to have a community where you're not like Very true. because it's like we said it's totally isolating just to work at your house and be a scavenger and you do everything by yourself you know it, it, that's why we started this sure. it's like there have to be other people already doing this with the same ideas that we can bounce ideas off right. of we're know? not making a money we're making karma karma <laughs> I don't know if you can make karma. <laughs> if you look up the definition, but no, okay. You can't make karma. No. You can't do things to earn karma. No, I don't know, okay. actually. Uh, I do want to uh, mention that Eddie at Sizely. People, S- you've heard of Sizely. I know you have. S- a size.ly. Yeah. Uh, he created like a little a system where you can put these thumbnail things on your uh, listings, especially uh, for clothes, right. where you can easily show how big something is. Right. It's like it shows the dimensions on a picture of like a shirt or a skirt or a yep. dress, which is actually, it's funny because for a while I had like a template. I don't know if it was before Sizely, like I made something like that and it's a pain to do it right. yourself. Well, I mean, I mean, ours was just showing people how oh, we how do we a measured. measurement. Like, but this his, is where we measure. His yeah. is dynamic where uh, you can do the uh, measurements, then you, you, te- uh, you type them in. It's fill out a form, and then it, it, puts, it makes an image. It's basically a picture yeah. of the item. Right. 
and it shows like the arm is 20 inches. And right. The chest is it. And so, how you measure it. Yeah, yeah. so it's smart. Uh, anyway, he's become a sponsor of the show. He so. is a new sponsor. You can, so. you can click through to Sizely on the sidebar yeah. now. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Yeah, that, you know, the, the money we do make basically just pays for our, uh, our server costs and stuff. Yeah, the server costs are not cheap. Thank you very much. Okay, some random. Uh, our rentals have been going well this uh, season so far. Yes. And this past week, we really enjoyed having the scavengers come and stay. It was kind of fun for us. Yeah, it's fun to, to meet people in person, yeah. certainly. So if you want to uh, come, check out our, our place. And also, if you want to start your own Airbnb, I don't know. It's it's For us, it's a cool way to subsidize, not subsidize... Uh, it's a different kind of income. I think it goes well hand in hand with Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah. Think about it. Uh, okay, let's talk about our numbers this wow, week. Wow, w- now we're getting to our numbers? Yeah. I thought the podcast was over right now. So <laughs> long. Yeah, numbers. How long have we been going? Let's do our, our numbers. So this week, we had a great week. We sold 53 items for a little over $2,500. What? And we... we Need to make a thousand. We need to gross a thousand dollars a week, right? To just kind of keep up. It's with our bills and feel comfortable about our world. Yeah, we made twenty five hundred dollars. That's great for us. That's, well, there was some high dollar items. Yeah, it's over three hundred dollars a day. That's awesome. And then yeah. our second store, we made about five hundred dollars. So that was also still great. also great. Yep. You know, why some weeks are slow and some aren't. Who knows? Um, things we sold. So we did have a big sale. We sold these two like industrial uh, valves. These like plumbing valves. We had bought like a huge cache of them. We we and we sold them for two of them for seven hundred dollars for so for three a fifty three fifty each. each. I think we bought each each one for about forty dollars. Yeah, and we talked about this several months ago. We went and we there was like a. A close out at this like uh, it's like place. warehouse place and and I saw them I was like I don't know what these are but, but cool. I know they're they're made in Sweden you know they're expensive I think I bought twelve of them for five hundred dollars or something this is a little under that but yeah. yeah and uh, and then we just came home and researched and people helped us on the uh, forum they're slow the, these are the first two we've sold so we've already made our money back right and made a bit of a profit so. They were not fun to pack, I'll tell you that much. They weighed 25 pounds each. Wow. They're heavy. Yeah. So I was like, oh, should I pack them in the same box? And I'm like, that's going to be a really heavy box. And so I did them in two separate boxes. It it came out okay for shipping. But But yeah, I mean, we sold 53 things and it was just like a lot of clothes. Yep. Hats, bags, and then just like a lot of uh, knickknacks. We sold another Insane Clown Posse out. $70. $70. It's like... I love it. Go all in. Yeah. You know. Uh, okay. Customer issues. So. Yeah. We sold an item to Mongolia. Yeah. Uh, and we shipped it first class. This was this was before I switched all my shipping to Priority International. Okay. I am not doing first class, honestly, for anything. Unless someone asks. Unless someone in Canada asks me, right. I'll change it. Right. Because... To Canada, there will be tracking. There's right? full tracking. Canada, yeah. UK, uh, Japan. Yeah. I, I feel like this was a mistake it's we made. Because we, I mean, this is exactly why we love global This is one shipping. of the reasons I changed things. I mean, it's just... And I don't know if we were hungry for sales or... I, I really don't yeah. re- remember the sale. But the problem is we, we mailed this thing to Mongolia. And it was like a $150 item. Yeah. And there's no tracking on it. The guy says it hasn't arrived and now we're in that dance of like telling them oh check your post office or like just wait and we have no power this is back in december too so you know it's been a while and this is just where we have to hope the buyer is honest yeah and if he gets the item that he doesn't do anything because he could get the item and be and like, just I didn't get it, give me my money. Right here, and, yeah. we, and we call eBay and they're like, yep, but there's no tracking. There's and the other thing too do. is I keep trying to say, please bring the tracking number to your post office and let me know what they say. And he never responds and says he's yeah. done that. So. so we're just hoping that it gets to him and then he's happy and then right. it ends. But yeah, It just takes a long time. Right. Literally, we shipped it to Mongolia. Yep. So... Uh, 
Next time anyone from Mongolia buys something, it's going priority. So things we learned in the uh, forum, there were quite a few things we were talking about. It was it was funny. We talked about the thing I love talking about, and that's being in a, a rural area. Yeah. There's a guy that came on. I think he's in Tennessee, mm-hmm. in rural Tennessee. And yeah. He owns like a little small farm, and people were talking about it. Um, I really think, in my mind, being in a rural area is like the ultimate scavenger Yeah thing because you're basically scavenging land land and buildings because if you're in america if you're outside of an urban area at least by a couple hours um the land is cheap yeah houses are cheap you can get house outbuildings you can get land taxes are cheap yep on our three houses i think we i think our tax our property taxes on three houses is like under twenty five hundred dollars Plus land. Total. Yeah. Right. For Taxes three houses and, and several parcels of land we have. Now, we have, we don't get a lot of services right, in for our land. area. Yeah. But land is cheap. Uh, yeah. And taxes are cheap. And, you know, and why is everything so cheap out here? Because there's no jobs. Yep. Um, there's no culture. There's no, <laughs> you know, store slash culture. I mean, some people would be like, of course there's culture. There's culture here. It's like a different, like it's a rural culture. But if you're looking for like... Lots of uh, movie theaters. And, and music, music. And cool and, coffee shops. Yeah, Those things you know, are not here. And if you like going to like a lot of different stores, like that's not out here. I mean, there are places you can drive to where those things right. are, but it's and, a drive. And there's a fewer chances to like partner up. So if you're like a single person, it's tough to move to a, a, a rural area and alone. Because, find a cool hip person. Yeah, or, you know, the person. Like the I place. would not have moved here by myself. Right. There's no way. Right. Um, so, but some people were saying, well, I live in a rural area and it's great. You know, there's like a music and yeah. stores and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, I wonder where those rural areas are. Because there are rural areas in America that are really cool, but they're also really expensive. They start to you know, get more expensive. Hudson, a valley, like right. that's a rural area. But, you know, so yeah. if you're in an area where like there's a lot of second homes or it's created like a cool artist community and now there's better jobs, then prices go, start up. To go up. The whole point, I guess I'm saying about being in a rural area is finding those places where, you know, it's like $100 a square foot, you know. Or less, yeah. Or or under. You right. Know? And that's... Because here it's it's $100 a square foot or less. Right. And, you know, obviously we've solved all those problems. Selling on eBay. Yeah. Uh, so we don't need a job. Airbnb. Uh, you know, uh, no stores or culture compared <laughs> to our bear. Well, we don't really need that stuff, you know. And there's the internet. Like, yeah. we get our culture from the internet. Really. Yeah. Uh, we make our own coffee. And we can, yes, start to learn how to cook, you know. And we have really got involved in our community, too. Yeah. And we don't talk a lot about it here, but we're on like a bunch of, you know, County boards. Community boards. And we're like helping boards. make things happen and helping the towns, you know, think about the a future and do I mean, a friend, of, a friend of ours from Brooklyn was like, oh, maybe I can move out here. And we were like, well, you know, if you're going to miss, you know, the, these handful of things that, that she often does and is a part of a food co-op right. and like... You know, beautiful dog parks and, you know, like <laughs> culture and movies and conferences. And we were like, yeah, there's none of that yeah, Like, we, if you have to think about it, is you got to be a pioneer. You have to make those things and happen. you have to make those things happen so, and make, like, your town or your community a project. If you know? that's what you're yeah. interested in doing. If not, those things are not here. Can I toot my own horn right? Sure, go ahead. Toot, toot. <laughs> so, like, this week I'm part of a community board and we're putting on a, like, a talk yeah. in town on industrial hemp. Right. Not the kind that gets you high, but the kind that, you know... Farmers. Farmers, like yeah, because hemp uh, is now legal to grow on a small scale in Virginia... Through an educational extension. So we found, like, a professor who's running that program at a local a university. He's going to come, and we invited all these farmers. Yeah. And uh, it's exciting, you know? It's it's fun to do. We're putting on a little show, you know? Like, that's the kind of stuff we used to do in the cities. Yeah. But now we're doing it here. <laughs> and, you know, it was, like, in the newspaper. I mean, it was, like, like a big It's, it like, it doesn't take deal. much to get in the paper. And right. and I love that. You know, yeah. I love uh, this scale of a community that I've never been in before. Yep. What is our coming week going to be like? We're just back into it. You know, we're here all summer long. And, uh... Yep. 
we have work to do. I got to finish those drafts, yeah. retake those photos. Yeah. <laughs> yep, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. And then I'm working with our helper because she's coming back this week and I need your help to get stuff out for her to photograph tonight. Absolutely, yeah. And, so. you know, and, and I have stuff to photograph because I still do photographs in uh, listings too. I'm like yeah. I'm I'm like the, the third helper. Yeah. But because I'm also an owner, I can pick and choose what, what I want to photograph. Do, so I get all the fun stuff I love. I do that too. Like I'll take photographs of like high end weird stuff, you know, right. in a pile and just get it up quick. Right. And that's a th- good thing about having helpers is that then they can uh, muscle through like clothes and things. <laughs> Ephemera. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we are not going to answer any questions right now because this has kind of been a longer podcast. And uh, But we will answer questions next week. Yeah. And the phone number is 540-407-8486. You can leave a message. Um, we'll have like a nice pile of messages to play next week okay that is it for the podcast this week you can check out the blog at scavengerlife.com for the links we discuss and to join the conversation on the forum we post an episode every monday morning on wednesday we post a what sells video currently brought to you by steven schultz in snowy snowy south dakota yeah i did not see that a video where I, I guess you show that it was like blizzard. yeah it was like there there was a blizzard yeah it was all this snow I'm like, I don't want to look at any more snow you're like I don't want to see that I don't want to see that you can subscribe to us through iTunes or YouTube so you always get the latest episode you can rent our vacation rentals like our other scavengers did you can look at our calendars the link is on the sidebar and we are ending this podcast in, in three, three two, two one, one.